So I have a rule. I have a little rule that I tell people. I have a cheat day. I cheat every Saturday. I can have In-N-Out Burger. I can have some pizza. But the rest of the six days, if I can see any sugar, I don't eat it. I don't touch it. Not even, not even a one spoonful. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kim, America's Holistic Foot Doctor. This is a final video of the Holistic Toenail Fungus Cures video series. So far we learned about all about the toenail fungus on the first video and then six home remedies on the second video that you can try at home first before you visit your foot doctor. Then we discuss four medical treatments that your foot doctor will try. In this video, I'm going to talk about your internal gut health and how it can strongly affect your toenail fungus. And it may also be the reason why you have not been able to eliminate your fungal toenail. I'm sharing my top three things you need to do to see results, and I promise the result will be worth it. Be sure to stay until the very end to see my number one tip on how to improve your overall gut health that most people don't know. Before we get into the three internal remedies, let's talk about four causes of your gut issues in the first place. The first cause is our food sources from toxic farming from weed killers, fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides. They cause massive inflammation in your gut and break down of what we call a tight junction. Your internal lining is like a Velcro put together like this. And when there's a lot of uh, these chemicals come into your body, it opens up so that your food particles can get into your gut lining and then causes your body to uh, fight it. We call them autoimmune disease. And there are many, many autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, there's Sjogren's disease, there's uh, uh, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis. There's so many of them out there. And a lot of people have this cause of opening of the leaky gut and then that causes all kinds of highly inflammatory status which causes a very depressed immune system. Second cause is all about the drugs, especially the prescription ones and the over-the-counter ones as well. Especially antibiotics, we feed antibiotics to a lot of animals to prevent it from having infection. However, when you feed them so much of it, they, they get what we call a super infection where uh, none of the uh, antibiotics would work for them. And unfortunately, we eat those animals so that we get a lot of antibiotics by doing so. So we're taking a lot more antibiotics than we, we think we do. And then that causes a lot of inflammation and we give a lot of steroids, uh, whether it's injectables or taking pills, and which are all highly inflammatory to cause the breakdown of the gut. The third cause is the fr processed food and fast foods with very uh, a tremendous amount of preservatives, taste enhancers like MSG, which tastes really good but cause a lot of problems afterward, artificial coloring, you know, dyes, and then flavors. Uh, there are food enhancers and flavor uh, enhancers, but they're very toxic to our gut and, and it causes tremendous amount of inflammation which breaks down all the immune system and they can cause the fungus to thrive in your gut. Let's not forget about the junk drinks that all of us are drinking, which is uh, full of toxic heavy metals as well. And the fourth one is excessive alcohols. And a little bit of alcohol is good. Uh, you can have some wine with your meals. You can have some you know, drinks here and there, but if you drink a lot every day or, or every weekend or all the time, it causes a, a lot of inflammation in your gut and that breaks down the internal system, especially we call them the tight junction, and then it causes an inflammatory process and, and, and your, your good bacteria in your gut cannot live there, which uh, makes the uh, fungus to flourish and then you cannot control your toenail fungus at the end. So we talked about the uh, main four causes of internal lining or your gut system to be highly inflamed and having problems with your immune system to be able to fight the fungus. So now we're going to have three main things that we can do to combat your highly inflammatory gut issue which makes your fungus to thrive in your gut. First thing you need to do is to reduce your sweets. Well, we all like sweets, and I, I like sweets too. I'm, I'm diabetic, and, and probably some of you knew that. I became diabetic about nine years ago when I injured my back, and I couldn't get out of bed for about three months, and I went through a lot. That's a whole another 
segment of the lessons I can give you in the future how I recover all naturally from debilitating back injury. But because of that, I became diabetic. And some reason, as soon as I became diabetic, I started craving for more sugar. It's really a weird thing. So, but I control it quite well. I don't take any medications uh, for my diabetes, and I control it well with my diet and my exercise and all the other things that I do. Uh, but you have to really control your sugar cravings. Unfortunately, when you are craving sugar, that alone means that you have a lot of fungus in your system. Why? Because through some kind of Wi-Fi system, we don't know what, it, your fungus tells your brain to eat more sugar because they want more sugar. I want more sugar. I want more sugar. Because of that whole you know, thing, tra uh, transmission or the, you know, the communication going on with your gut to your brain, uh, that I know for a fact if you're craving a lot of sugar, you have a lot of fungus in your system. Why? Fungus loves sugar. We talked about this in the previous videos already, how much they love and thrive on sugar, especially the processed ones. And they're in the can, in the box, in the, in the bottle. Uh, they, they package it in the factories. And they're not natural. They don't grow in the, on, the, on the ground, the vegetables and fruit that they grow on the ground, but they are made in the factory. When they make in the factory, guess what? They have to keep it in the shelf for a long time because they, they're made in some other states and they'll be transported into the big truck and then it'll be in the storage area and then the, in the shelf of a big you know, stores out there. And guess what? They have to preserve that. So they put a lot of preservatives in it, which are very toxic. They're almost like antibiotics for your body. They're very toxic, very inflammatory for your gut. On top of that, all the other you know, flavorings and coloring that they have to put in. You see this one? Wow. Looks beautiful, right? Look at all the, these are not natural colors. I'm going to tell you right now. These are all, you know, artificial coloring. You know, you see this, um, all, you know, this very tasty looking, the whole thing. A lot of uh, hyd uh, partially hydrogenated fat also in there as well. And they put uh, high fructose corn syrup, which is not even a corn. They're artificially uh, made and it's very toxic to us, causes tremendous amount of inflammation, causes your brain to inflame as well. And your whole body is totally inflamed all the time. And, and unfortunately, fungus loves these things. That's what they eat. So if you eat a lot of this, equals fungus in your gut which equals fungus in your toenail as well. So very careful. So I have a rule. I have a little rule that I tell people. I have a cheat day. I cheat every Saturday. I can have In-N-Out Burger. I can have some pizza. But the rest of the six days, if I can see any sugar, I don't eat it. I don't touch it. Not even, not even a one spoonful. I don't touch any of it. Why? Because I'm waiting for my cheat day to do all my cheating. And because of that, my sugar is well controlled. Because of the other six days, I'm really, really good about it. On top of that, I don't have any fungal problems. So it's very important to restrict your sugar. Pick a specific day. You can start with two days a week if you like, and then get down to one day of a cheat day where you can have some of these without guilt because you've been so good. You've done so much good that a little bit of bad won't affect the tremendous amount of good you've done. So highly recommend to reduce your sweets. We're about halfway through my tips to improve your gut health to eliminate toenail fungus. If you've enjoyed this video so far and learned something new, leave the words healthy gut in the comments below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. So now the second thing uh, uh, you need to do to improve your internal, your gut system is to improve your diet. And these are the only three things, but I can go for hours on this uh, particular topic, how to do your diet, but that's not the purpose of this particular video. We're going to talk about what type of things you need to do to improve your diet, which will in turn help your healthy gut and which in turn will help your healthy toenail. So first thing is a vegetable. There's no brainer here. I tell people, whatever the plate you're looking down, you need to have 80% of that should be some kind of fruits or vegetables. Okay? And it's 80-20 rule, which I believe in. When you do this, or even more vegetable if you can, and have about other things, about 20%, whether it's a meat or other things that you have. Because why? Because you're going to learn the most important thing you're going to do is to improve your healthy gut by having healthy, good bacteria. To have this, vegetables, your probiotics or good bacteria are vegetarians. They like vegetable. That's their food. We call them prebiotics. 
premiums before, obviously. So we're giving the prebiotics of the vegetables, all kinds of greens or, 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 or those things. When you give that to your good bacteria, they will thrive and flourish. So that's very important that you eat tremendous amount of vegetable. When you look down at your plate, you should have at least 50%, maybe up to 80% just completely filled with vegetables. So that's what I recommend. Another thing is most of us have very long colon. Your, your large intestine is about at least twice of your height. It's 12 to 15 feet long, all wrapped around here. It has to go through all of those. If you got a lot of hard food without good vegetables to carry this as a, like a fiber to move you, and you're not going to have a really good bowel movement either if you don't eat enough vegetable. And that's very bad because things getting stuck in your colon can cause all kinds of decaying, putrefying, we call them, it, very toxic uh, uh, to our, our body. So it's very important to have more fiber so you can keep moving and it also feeds your good bacteria. Second one is bone broth soup. You've heard this many times, chicken soup, right? The, the very famous books, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Amazing books. I read a lot of them. Uh, you need chicken soup because why? Uh, a lot of people think, oh, when I'm sick, I, 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 I have chicken soup. Why? It's very important. People don't know is that when you boil this uh, bone stock, all the minerals and collagen, most importantly, collagen comes out. And that's what heals your gut and covers your gut. It's, it's something that covers the layer of the stomach to allow your good bacteria to flourish is your collagen. So when you boil this, whether it's beef or chicken or pork or even fish, when you boil it for many hours, all the minerals along with collagen that are inside the bone will come out when you drink that soup. And not only is it tasty if you put some other spices like ginger or garlic or whatever. And then when you do that, you get plenty of collagen. Collagen is so important for our health. Not only it's good for your skin and gives you the plumpness of your skin, but it's like a brick. When you're building a, 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 a house, it's like a brick. Without the brick, how can you build a house? So collagen is like a brick. And by the way, vitamin C, which is on all the vegetables and fruits, and you, I recommend you taking extra of that too, uh, Vitamin C is like, like the cement that puts the bricks together, which is the collagen. So without that, your gut lighting will be opening, opening up. Remember we talked about the leaky gut that causes all kinds of problems. And without these things, your body cannot regenerate your inside your gut, which gives you an environment for the good bacteria to grow to kill the fungus. So it's very important you do a lot of bone soup. You can go to YouTube and find all kinds of different recipes, how to make bone broth soup. You can do chicken, beef, all kinds of different things. I love beef uh, because this, we Koreans eat a lot of these things. I try to eat at least three times a week. I just had one last night. And it's very important you do that. Or And then we, we're going to talk about the supplements on the next uh, slide. You also need to supplement in addition to doing this just to make sure you get plenty of this collagen and the minerals that your body needs to heal inside your gut and the rest of the body. Third most important fermented food. I know all about the fermented food because you can see this right here. This is called kimchi. Um, I eat kimchi every day. <laughs> it's something that I grew up with. It is something that it's on uh, my dinner table, you know, even breakfast, lunch, dinner, every time. We have many different kinds. There's literally hundreds of different kinds of kimchi. This happens to be a cabbage one, but there's a radish one, there's a pickle one. There, there's all kinds of different things that you can uh, have. You don't have to make it. They're a little bit challenging to make them. I don't know how to make them either, but you can buy them. Uh, or you can have other fermented food like sauerkraut and you can have pickles. There are many different things. Uh, also, the yogurt is good for you only if it's organic. If it's not organic, do not touch your yogurt because they're very toxic. They put all kinds of other things in it. So unless it's organic, do not uh, uh, eat yogurt either. So that's why the fermented food is important because when you ferment food, um, there are a lot of recipes on the YouTube as well, what to put in on the fermenting. It's very simple to ferment. You get either cabbage, you either put salt or sugar, whatever things you want, and then just close the cap. You have to let the air out uh, periodically. They show you how to do that on the video. When you just do this, let me tell you, you're going you're gonna to feel amazing. You're going to feel really calm. You're, you're going to have more energy. 
And by the way, you're going to lose weight as well. People don't know about this. It's one of the best ways to lose weight. Why? Because these little <laughs> probiotics or good bacteria is going to kill, get rid of all the bad things there. So your body doesn't uh, have any storage uh, after you eat. It would break down all of that. And probiotics, by the way, is the one that actually breaks down all your food. We know that stomach breaks it down because of the acid and all of that. But what breaks the food down into the very small pieces and repackaging it, sending it to the liver, will be your probiotics. People don't know this, unfortunately. And they think that our gut does all the work, but it doesn't. So without good bacteria, you become malnourished. Let me, let me repeat that. Without good bacteria, you will be malnourished. You'll be looking fine, but you're going to have a lot of problems. Your immune system will be down. You're going to get sick a lot. You may have allergies. And then it causes your liver to be inflamed. And then we call it fatty liver, which is a very, very dangerous thing because it can cause uh, diabetes, which is what happened to me when I was sick. And um, it, it's, it's a devastating to, to have your liver uh, uh, enzymes go up and down. And then uh, you have a fatty liver, which causes so many different diseases. So it's very important to have a fermented food with tremendous amount of good bacteria, which is not only going to nourish you, but it's going to reduce inflammation, it's going to repopulate the area, so it's going to it's going to get rid of all your fungus in your gut, which will in turn will get rid of the fungal toenail as well. So these are the three things that I recommend right now to really change your gut and which will change your health and then you may even lose weight <laughs> as a side effect of this whole thing. And then most important is the uh, supplementing. Now, a lot of people say, you know, I, I take a lot of supplements and people see my packs that I carry around and I, you know, take some before lunch or before dinner. I have, I have like 10 packs that I take every day. And most of them are herbs, but I believe in supplements because we've been on the farming last, you know, so many years, we haven't really rested our farms every seven years. We have a seven year cycle that we have to you know, cultivate and do all the farming. But on the seventh year, you're supposed to rest. Why? Because it's going to recompose, you know, decompose all these things and regenerate all the minerals and soil and all of that and with, the, with your earthworm. But that is not happening. Because of that, our land is mostly depleted of all the good nutrients of minerals and, and vitamins and all of those right now. So it is vital uh, for all of you to supplement your major things. Especially, we're going to only talk about the five things right now. We already talked about some of these things on the previous uh, slide. But it's very important for you to supplement in a daily basis to make sure you're getting enough of good nutrients to regenerate your gut, repopulate your good bacteria so that it can in turn fight the fungus to eliminate your fungal toenail condition. The first, we already talked about the probiotics, the importance of it. You need pl plenty or tremendous amount by eating more fermented foods, uh, taking more probiotics. I highly recommend you take extra just to make sure. I take myself three different kinds. <laughs> I take them in the, in the morning, I take them in the evening, I take them right before I go to sleep, just to make sure I get plenty of probiotics in a daily basis. Next one is digestive enzyme. If you are somebody who does have some uh, acid reflux or other digestive problems, highly recommend take digestive enzymes for, for a short period of time. I don't want you to take them for a long period because it's going to uh, kind of weaken your digesting power because it's going to give you all the enzymes, which are really good. So I only take digestive enzymes when I'm tired, when I'm not feeling well, if I'm having a really big meal, like big steak or something, which I don't do, but if I have to eat some hard food that is difficult to digest, then I take digest enzymes with it, no problem. If, I, if I'm traveling, I always take it with me because when you're traveling, your, your circadian rhythm is off, you're not digesting food as well, you're a little stressed because you're in a new environment, whatever, uh, so, and then you tend to overeat. So when you do that, I use that wisely and then it really helps to break down the food and it's a lot less work for your probiotics to break down your food even more to repackage and send it to the liver. So it's very important to take the digestive enzymes as well. Omega-3, one of the most important things you have to do is to nourish all your fat cells, especially your brain, and all your cells covering is made of uh, your good fat. So you need to replenish with omega-3. And by the way, omega-3 is one of the strongest anti-inflammatory medicine out there. And it thins your blood. So you don't, you, you know, if you eat a lot of junk food and your, 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 your blood becomes very thick, so we don't want that. So you want omega-3 to calm down inflammation and make sure blood thinner so you'll be able to get all the blood to all the extremities and all the other areas. 
And vitamin D, I can't say any more about vitamin D. We, we, all, we should all be uh, supplementing vitamin D tremendous amount. Uh, and usually, you know, you have to check your vitamin D level with your doctor uh, all the time. You have to know your vitamin D level. If I ask you, what is your vitamin D level? You have to know it like my height is this and my weight is that. You know those numbers. You have to know this number. This is the most important number you have to know. If you're diabetic, you have to know your blood sugar level. If you have a cholesterol issue, you have to know those levels. But vitamin D level, uh, you have to specifically ask your doctor to do this because it's not included on your panels of all the blood tests you do. So you have to ask your doctor to uh, find out the vitamin D level. When you have good vitamin D level, it's amazing for your immune system. It's the number one thing for your immune system to get rid of all the bad, you know, whether it's viruses or fungus or bad bacteria. This is the commander of all the immune system. So very important to make sure you have adequate amount of level of vitamin D all the time. I know in summertime you're out playing and getting vitamin D from your son, but that's not even enough because we're wearing, still wearing clothes and uh, the, 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 the most area that, uh, that we are exposed to, it doesn't get a lot of vitamin D produced from these areas. So it is important to supplement all the time to improve your gut, improve your immune system. Next one, we already talked about the collagen, uh, how the bone broth soup is so important, but I highly recommend uh, taking extra collagen. I, 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 I get a powder form and I put it in my, um, my shake, my, my uh, protein shake, uh, twice a day to make sure I don't age, I get good, good bone stock, it covers my gut lining, so decrease inflammation and have stronger immune system. So collagen supplementation is very important as well. And then biotin, obviously, biotin is what, what makes your nails and your skin, especially your nails. So it's important, your, your hair also. So it's important to supplement that. Why? Because we're trying to grow a new healthy nail. So you need that particular supplement to make sure your good nail is coming out. So I usually take hair and nail formula, which has the biotin in them. So I take extra to make sure I get the good hair, I get the good nail. So I highly recommend taking all these supplements to make sure, even after your good diet, to make sure that you have enough of all these ingredients to bring out the brand new beautiful nail to come out from within. And by supplementing from dieting, it would be a tremendous amount of help, not only from killing from all the home remedies you've done, all the medical treatment you've done, it's all helpful, but most important is you have to get your gut healthier, your internal system healthier by dieting and supplementing. When you do that, you're going to have a brand new beautiful nail coming out. Be sure to like this video if you found it interesting or learned something new. And if you think someone else will enjoy it, be sure to send it to them. Remember to subscribe so you never miss a video. I post videos just like this one every Sunday. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media channels, including Instagram and Facebook, to stay updated on everything happening on my channel. Until next time, be educated, get empowered, encourage others today.